so today I'm going to talk about um, a project that I needed uh, to run about six months ago, which included doing the data simulation in R. Uh, and I talked to like everyone I could in the department and no one knew how to do it. So I figured out how to do it. And then for those of you who I talked to and were like, hey, let me know how you figured it out. This is, this is that moment. Um, so basically starting with the problem, um, I, I had a project, uh, we ran some analyses for it. Um, and then some reviewers were like, well, how likely is this result like really beyond just like a p-value? Um, and so basically what we wanted to do was simulate our data um, specifically, we simulated it 10,000 times, and then we ran some analyses on it to see on the simulated data, how often would we get the result that we got. Um, so I'm going to basically walk through how I did that for this project. Um, it's like a repeated measures mouse tracking project, um, but hopefully it will be useful um, for like whatever kind of data you would want to use it for. Um, and I'm also happy to talk at any other point if someone wants like tips on how to like apply this for their data in particular. Um, so there's a couple of things in particular that I wanted to touch on. Um, one of which is, uh, or are a couple packages here in R, which is do parallel and for each. So with big simulations like this, especially if you have like um, really big data sets too, something like repeated measures, something like mouse tracking, which has a hundred time points for each of your participants broken down by condition and all that, you're gonna want to run these simulations in parallel. So if you ran um, just like simulating your data one time on your single CPU, um, that might take like a couple seconds. If you wanna do it 10,000 times and then run some analyses on it, it's gonna end up taking days at a time. And so it's really helpful to run these things in parallel. Um, and then there's also some resources at NYU, which is the NYU High Performance Computing Cluster, which means you can actually run them remotely and do these things in a matter of like, minutes to hours as opposed to like days to weeks. So I'll go over some details about that too. Um, so yeah, these are some packages you can use for doing that. Um, I'll kind of go over how to use them more specifically. Um, so as we start um, just getting our data going here, read in this data and I can show you what it's gonna look like. Um, basically we have our subjects, our subject ID here. Um, for our project, it broke down to like a two by two design. Um, this isn't particularly useful, but you can know this um, to see how you can apply it to your data. Um, so we have this filter variable, which is, amounts to basically low and high, and this rating variable, which was just negative and positive. And then we have, because it's mouse tracking, we have a whole bunch of data points going from one to 100, um, which basically just um, was an index of where participants like mouse, mouse movements were on the screen. Um, but for our purposes here, it's basically just X1 to X15. I cut down the data a lot so we could do this more quickly. Um, so that we have these um, for every single participant, these 15 variables. So we're going to simulate those uh, and then we're going to run our analysis on them to see uh, basically if we see the interaction that we found in our first data set. Um, so yeah, to start things off, um, you can run this command, which is uh, detect cores, and that will tell you how many cores you're working with. Um, so when I do that, um, I get this um, right here, which is 4L, meaning I have four logical cores on my computer, um, which means I can run a max of like four processes at the same time. Um, and then after that, you do register do parallel and you tell it how many cores you want to actually use for your um, procedure. Um, it's generally advised not to use all the cores that you actually have, because then you might just sort of over exhaust your computer and you can't really do anything else. Um, so here, our, our main idea, as I was saying before, was to run our analyses on this data um, a whole bunch of times and see how often we got the sort of like significant results um, that we saw. Um, so I'm setting up some empty data frames here to throw in some p-values. Um, and then we'll basically kind of run the test, add those p-values into these data frames, and then sort of look, um, okay, how often did we get the like significant results that, that we found? Um, so what this kind of amounts to is essentially just like a, a few nested loops. So we want to run the simulation, um, we want to do the analysis on it, and then we want to do that all again like 10,000 times. And so you start that off with this for each loop, um, which is part of the do parallel package. Um, so you tell it how many iterations you want it to run, and then you tell it how you want to combine the data. So because I just wanted a big list of p-values essentially, 
um, I'm doing this combined form, which is R bind, which is row bind. Um, so it's basically just going to add the results of these tests, just like one after each other, one after another in a row fashion. Uh, and so I'm just doing 10 for the purposes of today. When you do it for real, when you want to do like thousands and thousands, you'd probably put like a thousand in here, 500. Um, and then if you're running on something that's a little bit more high performance, instead of two cores, you do something more like 25 cores or 50 cores based on like what part of the HPC that you're using, which is the high performance computing cluster. Um, so I ran this already, but I'll just show you sort of like what's going on here. Um, so I'm setting up this table uh, to essentially look one by one at my variables. So going one through 15 and simulating those based on a few different factors. And so the factors that you um, sort of need or the things that you need to take into account to get this simulation uh, basically breaks down to like how many you want to simulate, um, what is the mean around it, or what is the mean, and then what's the standard deviation. And so the entire data simulation kind of breaks down to this one line here. So in R, you have this command called R norm, which creates a vector of multivariate normal random numbers. Uh, you need to give it a length. So you need to tell it, okay, how many numbers do you want to create? Um, what do you want the mean to be? And then what's the standard deviation? And so the way that I set this up was I made this temporary um, data frame, which is right here which breaks down the data into the subject and the condition. And then you have the length for each one. And so I'm basically just calling on all of these things to um, simulate my data in the, in the right order. So doing that, so that was just like one loop that it ran through for the full thing. I did this a hundred times. Um, it's good to keep these loops smaller because in general, R is not great with for loops. Um, it's sort of like it adds to the RAM each time. Um, so it's good to keep it in smaller chunks. That's something just good to know. Um, afterwards, uh, for my specific analysis, I was running a GEE. So I did that on the data, got the value for the interaction, specifically the p-value for the interaction, and then saw how many times it was like significant in a row, which is what we were interested in. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then basically we extracted the p-values from these, the GEEs which basically used this COIF uh, function and then summary, and then basically got the index of exactly where the p-value was. We extracted that um, and then put it into a table. And then after that, we basically just did a ggplot of what those values were, and we got something like this. So basically for all of our simulations, we did a total of 10. This tells us how often we got um, like a p-value sequence of a certain number. Um, and then that's essentially what we were doing for that project. We did it 10,000 times. Um, and then we got obviously sort of like this distribution of how often you just by chance get um, these significant interactions. So that's the basic gist of it. That's how I used it for my data. Um, I have this whole script available um, with like comments and stuff in there. Um, so I'm happy to share it with anybody.